Hi, it is Dr. Lanise. I am an author, speaker, blogger, and I take care of sick babies for a living. I love to help tired, frustrated, stressed out moms who have preemies in the NICU. I want to help you better understand what's going on with your baby, more effectively communicate with your NICU team, and most of all, know that you can make it through the NICU journey and that you don't have to do it alone. So today I'm here back for another Facebook Live with you, and I want to talk to you about three things you need to know about anemia in preemies. So let's get started. So number one, the first thing that I want you to know is what do I mean by anemia, okay? So we all have blood that is pumping all throughout our body, right? And in our bloodstream, we have red blood cells. So when these red blood cells are low, that's what we're talking about when we say anemia. And these red blood cells, the main component of that, one of the components of the red blood cell is hemoglobin, right? So we've all probably heard about hemoglobin. So what's so special about hemoglobin is that oxygen binds to hemoglobin, right? And so now the hemoglobin, the part of the red blood cell that goes all throughout the body and takes oxygen to different organs and different tissues in the body, making sure that oxygen gets everywhere. So when we talk about anemia and the fact that the red blood cell is low, we don't have enough hemoglobin, then that means we don't have enough oxygen to go out to the rest of the body. So when I'm talking about anemia, this is what I mean. So you might be wondering, well, what happens? Why is my preemie anemic? What causes that? So there is a couple of different reasons. One is that we think about the fact um, you might know, right, if you went into your doctor and your doctor told you as an adult, you know, you're anemic, one of the things that they may have done is ask you about your diet, what you're eating, and sometimes they recommend that you go on an iron supplement, right? So iron stores kind of help with this kind of anemia. So for babies in the third trimester of pregnancy, that is when they start to build up their iron stores in the body. And so when babies are born early, they don't get that full benefit, right, of going all the way until they get to term, like 37, 40 weeks. They miss out on some of the development of those iron stores. So when they're born, they're anemic, okay? Um, and they would be more anemic than, say, you know, a full-term baby. So we know that all babies um, have anemia. And so one of the reasons why is there uh, there is a hormone that is... Um, release that happens during pregnancy called erythropoietin, right? So this is like a medical term that you don't need to know anything about it other than this. So this production of the erythropoietin stimulates the development of the blood volume or the red blood cells, right? And so just after the baby is born, the release of this hormone goes down, and so it's not really stimulating as much production of the red blood cell volume. So this is the reason why all babies, whether they're born early or not, will actually become anemic. So when your baby is born full term, typically they don't show, um, they don't present or become anemic until about two months, right? So somewhere between eight weeks and 12 weeks, we know that they will ha have anemia. But typically they don't have signs or symptoms of that, right? It doesn't seem to affect them. Uh, so we don't really treat or do anything about it. We just know if we were to check a CBC, part of the CBC, we um, get information about the hemoglobin. And when it's low, we know that that's why, all right? It it's a natural response in the body where this goes low. But we don't do anything about it because we know, again, um, the bone marrow will kick in and it's a natural response to the body that it will eventually build this blood volume, these red blood cells back up, and so there's nothing that we really need to do to intervene. However, when we start talking about preemies, right, so they're sicker at birth, they're more vulnerable, and therefore this response is much more exaggerated, right? And we just talked about their iron stores being low. So already sort of at baseline, at the start, they're already going to be more anemic than a full-term baby. So then again, they have this more exaggerated response that sort of adds to the whole anemia issue going on. Another reason uh, why your preemie can also be anemic or more prone to be anemic is, again, when these babies are born in the first few days of life, especially if they're very small or they're very sick, sometimes we have to do blood work and labs. We have to look for infection. We have to check and see how the baby's breathing. Uh, we have to check the electrolytes to make sure that we're giving them the appropriate nutrition. So when you look at the blood volume in a baby, especially a preemie who's very small, compared to like you or I as adults, it's, it's much lower, much smaller volume, obviously. So even though we try to be 
conservative as possible and only get uh, those labs that we need, uh, even taking sometimes small amounts of blood from the baby can be very significant and can also lead to sort of a drop in their blood volume and therefore causing them to be more anemic, okay? So number one, we talked about what anemia is and why it is that your preemie would be anemic, okay? So the second thing that I wanna talk about is how does this affect your preemie? Um, what are some of the signs and symptoms like I mentioned before? So uh, one of the things that we will notice, right, if your baby is on any type of breathing support, we might notice that we have to increase their support, right? So if they have a tube in their airway to help them breathe like they're on a ventilator, we might have to start increasing the settings or even if they're on sort of what we call non-invasive, meaning they don't have a tube in the airway, but maybe they just have a cannula in the nose um, and they're getting some pressure or flow, we sometimes have to go up on that pressure or flow. So you and I, right, if we're not on oxygen, we're sort of breathing regular air, which has about 21% oxygen. So your baby, when they're on breathing support, they can be just getting some pressure and not needing any extra oxygen, or sometimes they need above 21%, maybe even 30%. So we might notice in your preemie who initially were on very low amounts of oxygen that suddenly we're having to go up on the amount of oxygen. So I've talked about before that sometimes uh, preemies have events, right, where they have a drop in their heart rate or drop in their oxygen level or desaturations. So we might start to notice that when the baby's anemic, we see more of these events. So they're having more and more bradycardias or drop in the heart rate or more and more DSATs, which is a drop in the oxygen level. So these are some of the signs that we see. Other things that we might see is, uh, for example, the heart rate. So the heart rate might be more elevated and faster, which is what we call tachycardia. And the reason why is, once again, right, we talked about the red blood cells, part of the blood volume, it gets pumped out all over the body. So when the hemoglobin is low, right, it binds the oxygen. So the heart, you know, everything works harder to pump out more blood volume to get more oxygen out to the tissues and the organs and the other parts of the body, which is kind of the way that the body responds to the low blood cell count. So that's another sign that we look for. Something else that we might notice is, you know, if your baby was old enough to start trying some feeds by mouth and we were able to get your baby to try, you know, eating, taking the bottle like four times a day, suddenly we start to notice that they're having a harder time. And, you know, they were able to take a significant portion of their bottle by mouth four times a day, but then they start to poop out, right? So just like when you would go into your doctor and your doctor might tell you, that you have anemia, or you may have noticed, you know what, I'm just really tired all the time. You feel fatigued. Even when you get sleepy, you wake up, you don't feel rested. So that same type of experience can happen in that your, your preemie can kind of poof out and get tired. So they have a harder time maintaining their temperature, or they may have a harder time eating which are some of the ways, you know, in which they're learning to grow. So ultimately, you know, they also may not grow as well, which is why we kind of routinely check to see what your baby's hemoglobin level is because we don't want it to drop too low to the issue where, again, we're having to go up on our oxygen, go up on our breathing support, and ultimately, you know, if we're having issues with feeding and all of that together, we know that um, preemie is not going to grow very well if we have all these things going on at the same time. So one, we talked about... What is anemia? We talked about what are the signs and symptoms that we might see in your preemie. And so then finally, number three is, so what do we do? How do we treat this anemia? So there's two main ways that we will treat it. One is that we can give a blood transfusion to the baby, and the other is we might put them on an iron supplement. So how do we make that decision, right? So it's gonna depend. So if you have what we call a micropremie or your baby is, you know, an ELBW, you know, which stands for extremely low birth weight infant, which is a baby who was less than a thousand grams or two pounds at birth, this again would be right our most vulnerable baby. So they're more likely to be on breathing support and they're more likely to be needing more oxygen. And so when they're this small and already, you know, at baseline more at risk to be anemic, then we know that, you know, the baby is not going to be able to build up their blood volume back on their own. So in order to sort of turn down the amount of oxygen that we're giving the baby or to ultimately get the baby off of breathing support into room air to help your, the baby to eat and all those types of things, we don't want to keep um, the baby anemic for that long. So we will just go ahead and give them a blood transfusion. Any baby who's on a ventilator um, and anemic, we're just gonna go ahead and give them that uh, blood transfusion in order to build up the volume to make sure that we're getting out enough oxygen to the, uh, to the baby and so that they don't right have that, that um, tiring out um, effect that takes place. Uh, 
other things that we use to do to determine. So if your baby, let's say, is bigger, right, around 1,500 grams or three pounds, right, and maybe they're not on any breathing support or maybe they're just on a lower amount of breathing support. So that's not the same situation. So that's not an automatic. But we might look at a couple of different things, right? So if your baby is on a low amount of breathing support but maybe having many of those events that I talked about again, many drops in the heart rate or many drops in the oxygen level, then we might say, it might be worthwhile, you know, to eventually get this baby off of oxygen and to kind of help not have so many of these events, we might want to go ahead and give the baby blood transfusion. Another thing that we'll do is we'll look at something, again, another medical term called the retic count. And this is basically just a measure of how active uh, the bone marrow is working to sort of build up the baby's blood volume. So if we get um, a very high, nice, good retic count, then we can say, you know what, the baby's working to bring that up on their own. Maybe what we can do is start iron supplements in this baby so that um, we don't necessarily have to give the blood transfusion. So it's just going to kind of depend on a case-by-case -case basis how much oxygen your baby is on um, and whether or not they're already on iron supplements or how many events they're having. Because if they're having lots and lots of events and we wean down their oxygen but we can't get them completely off then we might say it's worthwhile to just go ahead and build the baby's blood volume back up and help them to eat better maintain their temperature better and kind of get them off of the breathing support however in a situation where maybe your baby's in room air they're eating and gaining weight well um, they're not having a lot of these events and we you know get their routine check on their labs and we see their hemoglobin is low and they have a good retic count that's the baby that we could say, you know what, we can just watch and monitor this baby. We don't need to intervene by giving a transfusion right now because they're doing well and doing everything that they need to do. Uh, but the main two things that we do is one, to give the transfusion and one, to start iron supplements in some babies, um, just depending on kind of what your preemie is doing. So this is, these are the three things that you needed to know about anemia and preemies. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, when you watch the broadcast, please share, share, share. Once again, I am Dr. Lanise and I take care of sick babies for a living and I love to help out preemie moms. So please like my Facebook page, please follow me. I am all across social media as at Dr. Lanise MD. That's the at symbol. D-R-L-A-U-N-I-C-E-M-D. So check me out. I'm going to be doing Facebook Lives every Wednesday at 5 p.m. So I hope to see you another time soon. Thanks. Bye.